Hi Mike here, this is Supine Gadgets with a look at the Atari 2600. So what can we say about the Atari 2600? Well it was originally released in 1977 in the USA, followed by the UK and Europe in around 1978 mark, and finally in Japan in 1983. So the Atari 2600 was also one of the longest running video game consoles. It ran all the way through to around the 1992 mark when Atari finally did uh, discontinue it. Now this particular model is the Atari 2600 Junior because the original uh, 2600 was black on top but with a wood surround and quite a bit bigger. Now the Atari 2600 Junior is released in 1986 as more of a budget line and to try and keep it in line with the stylings of the 5200 and 7800 that Atari had released at the time. Now those two particular consoles were nowhere near as popular as the 2600. So overall the uh, Atari 2600 did sell about roughly 30 million units over its lifespan so it's one of the, quite a popular unit. So what sort of games was it able to play? Well a lot of the games were arcade ports such as Space Invaders and Pac-Man. And Atari also made some of their own games such as Centipede for it as well. So what we'll do is we'll have a look around the console itself and then in another video, later down the line, we'll start looking at the games. And this is going to be a follow-on series. So every week, we're going to have a look at a different game. So first of all, we have a quick look around the console. As you can see here, we have four buttons on top of the console on the Junior. We have the on-off switch right here. We have a colour or black and white switch. Uh, some games did support the black and white, but most of them I come from experience. Don't, they don't actually have any effect switching that to black and white or not. You've got the select and reset buttons which we use for the games which you find, especially the select button is still found on many game consoles today on the controllers and the reset was to reset the game. Here we have the cartridge slot and on the back of the console itself we have a channel just just there we can have a look there that is possibly for tuning the station in for the analog video which goes there that is the analog input or output rather to the video so we have a standard aerial lead for that and that plugs into there like so and then that end you can see right there is the aerial so that goes in the back of the TV and it was an analog video output so quite a lot of TVs don't support it anymore. And then we have two inputs for the game controllers. Now these are similar, I think, to things found on the Mega Drive. You could actually use a Mega Drive controller with this, or Sega Genesis as it is in America. And then here we have the difficulty switches. So we could set the difficulty of the game, although I'm not sure exactly how often they changed the difficulty in the games and then finally the power input um, from the transformer so that is the game console on the back here just the branding so we've got Atari branding there made in China this is a PAL model could just bring it into shot a bit more you can see it there PAL model and the serial number obviously that doesn't really matter not being covered up these days because it's that old and you can just about see the circuitry inside there. So there we are, that is the Atari 2600 game console. Now unfortunately I don't actually have the original controller for the game console, just move that out of the way. I have got uh, one of these, you can see the port just there, that is the type of port you can plug into the console. I bring the console back in and we can plug just in there and there we go the controller is plugged in like that now unfortunately although this does feature two buttons just 
move the control out of the way so we can see it. Although this does actually fe feature two buttons, uh, the Atari 2600 only could use one at a time on a controller. Now, incidentally, there was a game released, or possibly a few games, with one I know definitely, that you had to plug two controllers in here because it needed two buttons to control the game. And that, if I just pull over from this side, was Raiders of the Lost Ark, right here. Now, Raiders of the Lost Ark was an adventure type game, quite ahead of its time, I suppose, when it was released in the early 80s, and you needed two game controllers to play this. One to move Indy around on the screen and to fire, and the other one was to access his inventory, or his inventory, um, and select what type of item he wanted to use at the time. So I've got a while we've got a cartridge in, what we do is you can put it in this slot here. Right, so. And the label always goes like that. So that is the uh, game, game cartridge. These particular cartridges have got a bit of protection to stop the circuitry being uh, shown. And as soon as you pop it in there, that unlocks it and it goes in. It's fine. There's certain cartridges though. If we have a look at another cartridge, this is uh, made by Parker Brothers. And this doesn't, as you can see, the circuitry right there. This is the Star Wars Empire Strikes Back game. Now I've got a total of 13 games for the Atari 2600, so I'll go through them now. We've got Space Invaders. This is one of the original packagings from the late 70s. You can see game program written there. This was a Space Invaders. Now, unfortunately, some of these have got a bit tatty over the years. And then we've got Centipede. Now, this is the more newer version of the packaging. Tower 2600 Centipede. This is from the early 80s. And then we've just shown you the Atari, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Star Wars Empire Strikes Back. Super Breakout. Now, Super Breakout differs from certain some of the other games because it actually uses. I just pop that there. It uses paddle controllers. Now, these are two paddle controllers for two players, and you use it like a. a well, it's called a paddle. So you move your tennis racket around on the bottom of the screen on this game on Super Breakout. And then fire with that, which is uh, that was actually to release a new ball, I think. And you'd swivel that to move your bat around on the bottom of the screen. There was about 39, 40 games that supported the paddle controller. As you can see, we've got two there. That's a, a joint game, and they just plug straight in. Standard controller, nothing different there. So move those onto one side, and we'll carry on looking at the other games. We have. Uh, Pitfall, which is quite famous, this was what started Activision off. Activision obviously famous for like a Call of Duty games these days. And this is one of the originals from the Atari 2600. And I believe it was this that actually started off the whole third party game gaming games for the Atari 2600. Because before that, it was kind of like Atari had the monopoly on making games for the Atari 2600. Whereas Activision wants to make their own, publish their own, that type of thing. So eventually they got that. And that just slots into there. Even though it's a third party, nothing different. Incidentally, these cartridges are about 4 kilobytes uh, capacity. Although there was some that was higher, but they had to switch things around. Also got Berserk, which is another Atari game. We've got Tukan Kamen, which is Konami. Now, Konami is famous these days for the likes of uh, Metal Gear Solid, and they started off early days, things like this, Tukan Kamen on the Atari 2600. And then we have Dig Dug, which was licensed by Namco, as was, uh, as was Space Invaders. We've got Pole Position, which was Atari's own game, We're based, I think it was on the... Uh, Taken off the arcades. Then we got Miss Pacman again, another Namco game. And finally, 
we have Pressure Cooker, which was another Atari game. Uh, possibly not heard as much about Pressure Cooker as we have done about um, Pitfall, but there's another of the Atari uh, Activision games. And finally, yes, we have Donkey Kong, made by Nintendo. I see Nintendo are still making game consoles, and it's unusual to see a Nintendo game on another game console. It's uh, unfortunate though, the Donkey Kong version on the Atari 2600 only had about two screens and it just used to go round and round in circles so it wasn't that fantastic really compared to say the uh, NES version. So there's all the games and the Atari 2600. So in the next video we're going to have a look at some games. So to start with what we're going to have a look at uh, is Centipede. Pole position and the game that started the popularity of the Atari 2600, Space Invaders. So, until next time, thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. See you again next time.